Hi, hello. Welcome to the afternoon session. So, uh, this afternoon session we will begin with uh, Jerónimo Uribe. Jerónimo uh, is a researcher here at the Instituto of Mathematicas and uh, he graduated in actuarial sciences and, and after that he made his PhD and of course <laughs> graduated in 2007. And uh, uh, the advisors uh, were Maria Emilia Caballero and, and Jean Bertuan. And after, uh, be because of this PhD, he, re he received the, the Baseman Prize here in Mexico, the best PhD, uh, PhD uh, thesis in science. After that, uh, he had like a postdoctoral position in the in Institute of uh, Mathematics and uh, Applied Mathematics and Systems here in Mexico and also the University of California at Berkeley. And since 2011, he joined the, the Instituto of Mathematicas here uh, at UNAM. And uh, he's one of the main uh, specialists in probability and stochastic processes here at the Institute, and especially in levy processes and branching processes of stochastic calculus. So today he's going to talk about uh, random trees and levy type processes. So Jerónimo, please welcome. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the introduction and the invitation. I must say that I'm uh, absolutely honored uh, to be able to give this talk. So I've only been around at the Institute for like 15 of, it, of their 75, of its 75 years, and that's if you count uh, all the PhD work, right? So I've only been hired since about six years ago. Uh, and, well, you know, all, most days when I come to work, all, all I, want, when I really want to do is, you know, to make this institute thrive so that we can, you know, inherit it with pride to the next generation. So I'm going to talk about inheritance, generations, because that's very suggestive of genealogies, genealogical trees. So uh, I'll be talking about some particular models of random trees. So they, you can think of them as random genealogical trees. They will be linked to population dynamics and uh, some random functions that one, one can associate to these uh, random trees, which are of uh, what they're called, the technical name is Levy process. So uh, here on the picture on the left, you have one of the examples uh, of a random tree. So this is an instance of a random tree. So I threw a bunch of dice this morning and got that tree. If I threw them again, I'd get a different tree. And on the right, uh, you have the picture of uh, what would be a Levy type process. So this is actually a, an, an exact Levy process. It's called a stable process. And, uh, well, as you can see, it seems to be discontinuous, right? In fact, one can prove that in all, in all instances of this random function, uh, this, you know, the set of uh, times at which this process has discontinuities is actually dense. So this is, this is kind of a very complicated random function, uh, one that we have to deal with because uh, in probability they just appear all the time. Good. So let's start with some history, and that's uh, going back to the year 1875, in which, you, wouldn't, you know, it was still the Victorian area in England, and they were very worried about the propensity to disappear of aristocratic family names. Well, uh, so uh, Galton, a, 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 a polymath, uh, proposed the, 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 the problem of mathematically studying the probability of extinction of families. And then Reverend Watson, together with Galton, made this analysis that we still teach to, to undergrads uh, these days. So what is the model that they were considering? Well, we're going to start, say, with a, a, a bunch of initial individuals. Here I started just with one. And these individuals will reproduce randomly. Right? So each individual will decide if, for example, it reproduces or not. So this one decided to reproduce, and so the population did not become extinct. 
Uh, so in this particular case, I'm thinking of only binary uh, reproduction. So individuals hi have either two or zero offspring. You can think of you know, throwing a coin and then uh, you get two children if, if it comes up heads or, or you, know, you get zero children if it comes up tails. Uh, so here we got heads, uh, heads, tails, etc. right? So at first this, uh, okay, so what I need to say now is I, I kind of specified the dynamics of each individual, the reproduction dynamics of each individual, but uh, I'm going to assume that all individuals are independent. So it, it doesn't matter if your neighbor gets like, okay, two children, you are going to take your decision independently using your own coin. Okay, so this is one instance of this random family tree that we get. So here the population started to grow, you know, sometimes it even doubled because everybody had children. And then at the end, we, you know, just as the population suddenly doubled because everybody had children, uh, descendants, here the population kind of drastically decreased because, uh, you know, they got a lot of bad luck. Until, you know, at this generation, nobody reproduced, and then the population became extinct. So, in this particular model, what, what uh, Galton and Watson proved was that extinction happens with probability one. So, no matter how you toss the coins, since it's a well, one-half probability to get two children, uh, one-half probability to get zero children, uh, if you go on long enough and analyze this, this family tree long enough, eventually the population will become extinct. So their analysis of extinction used uh, what's called a generating function. So, okay, so here's the model. More, it's uh, uh, totally rigorous if you know what uh, independence means. Uh, and so the quantities that we will be interested in is, for example, z of n, the size of the nth generation. So here I put, uh, you know, there's the prop, this uh, gray squares kind of give you an idea of the size of, of, of each successive generation. And so that's a zn. And we're going to use the generating function of what's called the offspring distribution. So mu of k will be now the probability to have k children. So we... Uh, Construct this generating function. It has a graph that looks a bit like this. So it ends at one. It starts at mu of zero, which is the probability of having zero 